Um, well, this film is this is not something I. Oh, this is a lot of money. Yeah. It's not something I planned, and you, you couldn't plan something like that. It's just it happens, an impeachment happens, and um, I felt I had to document it. It was uh, so I did when when I went to Brasilia. I'm from Brasilia. I was born and raised in Brasilia, so my parents mm -hmm. still live there. Um, I had no money whatsoever, so it was a decision that uh, I took one day, four days later, I was in Brasilia to film the, uh, just eight days before the House of Representatives voted to begin the proceedings, which became the prologue of the film. And then I, I personally, at the time, I didn't believe it was going to happen. You know, I, I didn't want to believe it was going to happen in many ways. So when it did pass in the House of Representatives and went to the Senate, I couldn't go back anymore. You know, I just had to carry on. And so it was a long process. It was a film that um, uh, was in some way, uh, I'd never filmed so much in my previous films. I shot 450 hours of material. That's, that's a lot. You know, uh, and we shot 70 days during a six months period because we never, you know, I, it, it was impossible to know what was gonna happen in those committees as well when, for example, Janaina was just turning one of those amazing statements and uh, or, um, so we had to shoot all the time to get it on camera and um, so it was, uh, it was a process of, um, yeah, it was a lot of hard work in some way. Um, yes, uh, you brought her up, so of course I have to ask her about her. She's really a figure, that woman. So what, like, first she has, like, three times you show this dramaturgy where she, like, ends up crying in the end, uh, which is, like, is that something she's, like, who is she and where does she come from and what is she doing now? Um, well, uh, who is she? It's a difficult, you know, I think the film answers that in some way. I mean, she she was a lawyer, now she's a politician because she was became a politician. Oh, so is she a politician? Three. So now, now um, she just won uh, in the last election when Bolsonaro was elected president. She was elected uh, state deputy in Sao Paulo in the assembly, in the state assembly and she got two million votes. She was the most, uh, I mean, she had the highest number of votes of any state deputy in Brazil. So it's uh, pretty uh, shocking, by the way. But So she's now a deputy, um, following what Linda Beck, Senator Linda Beck said, you know, you hear because, you know, this is a campaign, um, you know, uh, project you just like to become a, a politician anyway and uh, so she's now a politician but she was a lawyer she teaches at the you know, she used to teach at the University of uh, Sao Paulo and um, and when I decided to make because this is a courtroom drama right it's the whole the whole structure of the film is a courtroom drama so of course I needed to have the uh, defense lawyer and the prosecutor the prosecuting lawyer, and she was representing the prosecutor. She was the prosecutor, prosecution. Um, uh, so uh, it doesn't, it, you know, it's not as if I chose her. I mean, she was chosen by the right to be in that position, also because of who she is, emotionally, and you know, all that sensation and the emotion and conservatism and and uh, the you know, against abortion and fundamentalist values and principles. She represents all that, and she's a woman, because they were impeaching a woman. So it was important for them to have a woman in that. Um, so, yeah. And you get, um, somehow you, you managed to get, um, like, into these, um, like the inner meetings of the PT preparing, how was that? Like they just open up for you, or how? Like how did you? And did you do a deal with them, or or could you decide whatever you wanted to, to put on? Yeah, no, I I wouldn't have done any deal. Uh, that's 
conflict is, I mean, either I have independence or I don't do anything, I don't fill. So, uh, and there was no negotiation and they didn't ask as well. So they were, of course, it, there was some convincing. It was not as if, oh, here I am, can I film? It wasn't like that, of course. I have, um, as I said in the beginning of the film, uh, before the screening, I had um, made, I made three long feature films within the justice system in Brazil. Uh, one is called Justice, the other one is Behave and uh, Heal with Pleasures, and they became very known, they were quite known outside, but also in Brazil, and the, the lawyers and um, uh, law professors, they used the, particularly the first two to, uh, in lectures. So I, so they felt they could trust me in some way, you know, sort of a, uh, they opened up for me. They knew what sort of films I made and, uh, um, and I was the only one allowed, me and somebody else that was also filming anyway, that was allowed to film. So that was, anybody else was outside. Um, well, I think you have questions, and I have many, many more questions, but I'll let you in now and I can go on. Yes, first, do you want? Thank you. Um, I have three questions, but they're short. Um, there was one guy towards the end of the movie who was talking about a need for PT to reform themselves and to admit to certain mistakes and kind of, you know, to have chances of reclaiming the cause in the future. Um, my first question is, um, who was that? And it also reminded me of when the brother of Ciro Gomez showed up to the PT rally after um, the, the first round of votes <coughs> and started sort of shouting at PT supporters that they were fools if they thought that they could ever win power again unless they had sort of they took a good hard look at themselves and realized that they had made a lot of mistakes with corruption and so on and unless they did that they would kind of the, the same thing as that guy said basically and so my second question is do you know of a movement in Brazil either within PT or of allies of the PT party that still promote or represent any such movement within or outside of the party. And the third question is, do you know of any other documentaries that depict the other side of the cause of the um, impeachment process? Mm -hmm. um, oh, sorry, I'm a visitor. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Oh. Uh, but you live here? No, I do. Ooh, many questions. No, first of all, it's important to, um, before I answer that question, um, that to say that I didn't know any of those people, right? Although I could say that I'm sort of um, more of a left winger. <laughs> I live in Holland. I vote for the Partei van de Arbeid, and yeah, and I voted for Lula, etc. But I, you know, I didn't know any of those politicians, neither from the right nor from the left. Um, I got to know them, and that's in the process of filming. So um, I think I always say that a film is a process of a discovery, of you know, a cinematographic discovery, of filming, of editing, um, particularly in my work that has to do with characters, with following characters. Um, the first question, uh, what you said was that well, the first the guy who says that and and does the. Uh, the self-reflection is um, uh, he was secretary of communication to Lula. He is very close to the Lula government, to Lula himself, Gilberto Carvalho. Um, and uh, I think that not in the film, I think not only him, but also Senator Glazy Hoffman does a lot of looking, uh, uh, self-reflection and self-evaluation. And um, I think it's very different than a situation with the brother of Ciro Gomes, completely different, different contexts. Um, I think <laughs> there is um, a huge uh, mis, um, uh, misconception and, and misrepresentation mis of, of the, the, the Workers' Party in some way. The whole thing about 
the, the, the corruption and that they don't look, I mean, that's, they, they can't um, uh, admit their mistakes, that it's rubbish to a degree. I mean, I've seen it many times happening. It has happened many times. What about the corruption of the rights? What about the corruption of the, of the moro and the car wash? What about the huge years and years and years of corruption before the left came into power? So I think it, it's, it's a lot of media rubbish, you understand? I mean, yeah. really, it really made, pissed me off because what about what we're living right now? That is much, much worse. I mean, we have a president that asshole, you know, that is a wave <laughs> of torture. How can you, I mean, how can you justify that? I mean, how can you, and when he was, and the reason why I said that in the beginning, pay attention to that man that is going to dedicate his vote to, because that, at that time, that day, he should have been expelled, because that means something. It makes it legitimate to be in favor of torture, to be in favor of violence. When you actually dedicate or you say openly that your hero is a man who tortured and killed and put mouses and rats in, me in the women's vagina, and you, you're gonna carry on saying that the, the, the problem is that the worker party doesn't, doesn't criticize, doesn't have any self-reflection, for God's sake. I mean, come on, you're just repeating the whole um, uh, media, the, the, the large media um, statement over and over again. Oh, the corruption of the PT, the corruption. So therefore, we have to, to uh, impeach her. I mean, look at this impeachment. It's a joke. What are we looking? I mean, <laughs> we knew that was going to happen. So, you know, I, I really just knew what to hear about. The, the, the corruption of the, the Workers' Party, I mean, yeah, they, they yeah, and they, I think they, they did accept that they made a mistake. They're doing it in the film, openly. It's twice. That's, I mean, I don't see the media doing that, given what we're living now. You know, the other, I mean, the only one that was, that had the, the decency to say that, yeah, it was a coup, and they made a mistake, they shouldn't have done it, they shouldn't have supported it, was Jere Saatchi, senator from the PSDB, a year, six, six months ago. Because of, you know, so, what is the, what is the, uh, where's the self-reflection from the elite? I mean, we have a, it's, a, yeah, my barbari. I don't even know how to say that. It's just, uh, it's, it's completely absurd. Every day, I mean, they're destroying the country. They're destroying, they're gonna destroy the Amazon. They're going to destroy people's lives. People are being murdered in Rio. I mean, <laughs> when it, when are people in, we always, we talk about is Venezuela. Sorry, sorry, I, I, I get very emotional because it really is. It's completely, uh, I think, also justified to get emotional about this. Uh, it's very controversial. But I just want to take advantage of you understanding this context to actually pick up, to actually pick up a point. Are there other people you think are, are, um, you know, important to know of that sort of represent a new uh, type of echelon within PT that are representing a new type of direction of how they do politics or anything like that? Mm -hmm. but, I mean, besides I, I think, this, I think, I think uh, Gilberto Carvalho yeah, Inglesi. You know, I think I think there is a lot. I mean, even the uh, what's his name, the one that ran for president, uh, Fernando Haddad. I mean, a lot of people have done uh, have done. Uh, have done self-evaluation, and I mean, that's, Gilberto Carvalho is not the only one. Uh, you have, I think it's important to understand that the reason those car wash and uh, they start to in investigate corruption and find out about the corruption was because of the, the policies that were adopted by the Workers' Party, okay? 
before that, there was corruption too, but nobody was allowed to investigate. Okay, so, so nobody talks about that. I mean, that's why Fernando Henrique Cardoso and his previous governments, it, it, they used to say that the, um, um, the general prosecutor, how do you call that? Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, Rodrigo Janot. Attorney General. Huh? Attorney General. The Attorney General uh, at the Fernando, uh, Fernando Henrique Cardoso's government was uh, engavetador geral. Because he kept everything in a lock, locked in a in a in a drawer. in a drawer. That was his nickname. He never investigated anything. Yeah. So and now we hear, oh yeah, but the PT, the PT. That's why I mean they allowed it, and that was out of that's a good criticism out of complete naivety. I think. Now he was asking about the role of the media. I don't think she liked me very much. But, <laughs> but uh, I would like to give my, my question. Yeah. Maria, excuse me, but she, I, there was a question oh, here. Sorry. So could you, yes, okay. could, could you yeah. get that first and then, because I don't think we heard that other question. So uh -huh. is that okay? We just get that first. Yeah. I was astonished by the numbers of the votes that uh, Dilma Rousseff was only uh, supported by around uh, a quarter of the votes. How, how come? Why, 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 how come it was such a substantial uh, majority to oust her? My question was, uh, I was thinking about the role of the media. Mm -hmm. um, she didn't get so much uh, support of the, of the Brazilian media, mm -hmm. but I think uh, she didn't get any support of the media worldwide. Mm -hmm. Even here in Sweden, uh, my experience is that the media wasn't uh, so uh, reporting so favorably uh, uh, about her. Mm -hmm. uh, but now everybody's complaining because we have someone who is seem to be worse. Mm -hmm. uh, why do you think it's like that? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to ask to answer those, your question first. Uh, what happened is that um, uh, although it, we have a presidential system, right? So Dilma was elected, re-elected, but she didn't have majority. And she wouldn't have ma majority. Lula also the, the Workers' Party didn't have majority in, go, in Parliament, and she knew it, they knew it. So they had um, a, so her vice president was from another party called PMDB, the one that is supposed to be the traitor, right? Mm -hmm. This right wing, center right wing party, very, very corrupt, um, but you to be for governability you have to have a alliance right and when he decided when they decided to impeach her i mean the whole thing they the the, the pmdb backed the vice president so that's how you have to understand that it's i mean it's not if it is in like in um, in the states that you have Obama is you know is from the Democratic Party and the a vice president also Democratic, because they couldn't, they had that many many small parties in Brazil, so you get diluted. You have to um, make a coalition, in some that's why she didn't. When they turned against her, she didn't have the the votes. Um, that's one simple explanation, but anyway, there's a whole film that explains why she was many interests. Now, going to the, uh, talk about the media, well, um, the Brazilian media, the, the um, 
uh, large media, is very conservative, has always been, uh, hated the Workers' Party, has demonized Dilma from the very beginning. They just, you know, they, um, Global is a very powerful, was a very powerful, still is a very powerful uh, um, medium concern. They have TV, they have um, newspaper, they have, and now they're together with Global. I mean, <laughs> Bolsonaro is in at war with Global because he has the support of um, a fundamentalist, an evangelical fundamentalist group that also owns a TV station. So it's, the whole thing is pretty, but it, it amazes me and it amazes me now as well. I live in Holland, so I know exactly what you mean when you say um, uh, how, how uh, is it possible that we Europeans don't get the truth or don't get the other side, right? Don't get to hear the, uh, the arguments against the impeachment, only the arguments for the impeachment. Because I think that still the, the large media is completely um, controlled by big interests, big concerns. I mean, it amazes me that you turn on the BBC and the only thing you can hear or the Dutch public TV or the French public TV or probably the public Swedish TV and you hear one argument, for example, against Maduro. Never one, I mean, it's, it's never, it's, there, it's only one. Uh, I'm not defending him, I, but I think that the reality is more complex than that. You know, nobody talks about the interest in oil, you know? I mean, the, the pre-sold oil reserves were sold. The whole thing was sold. I mean, that was in, in um, uh, when they discovered the pre-sold oil, what the Workers' Party did was to, what Lula did, which is given all the mistakes and all the problems and all whatever, they, they, they created a, situa uh, um, a um, way of exploiting the oil reserves that 70% of the profits would go into education. And, the pro and, they, he, and he kept, I mean, uh, they created a, which is more or less like the, I think, Norwegian way of exploit exploiting the oil, that you can't simply, um, it is a, um, it's a shared exploitation. It's not like we wouldn't sell the oil reserves to Shell, whatever, you know. We just, the, the, the government would keep some of it to have some control over I mean, the first thing that the Temer did and Bolsonaro did was to sell it all. So there is no more 70% uh, for the education. I mean, they, he's cutting half of the education. They froze 20, but I mean, can you imagine that? Freeze, freeze 20, freeze um, um, public investment in health, education, structure, whatever, for 20 years? <laughs> the workers of the cinema are telling me that we have to stop. I have 10 more questions. All of you have much more questions. Uh, and we